Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. While I was doing the research for these Maxion Gen 3 solar cells that are going to be used on the Aptera, I ran into something that I had never heard of before and was really fascinating, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, so as you know, the Maxion Solar uh, Gen 3 cells are one of the most efficient cells available. In fact, I think it is the most efficient cell available commercially at around 23 to 24% efficiency. And if you look at this um, PV module efficiency site, they range um, commercially available uh, PV cells range from 16 to 18% for polycrystalline, the monocrystalline, and then these various types. And then the most efficient are the IBC N type. And the IBC N type is the type that the uh, Maxion cells are. So it stands for interdigitated back contact cells. And if you look at the back of the um, SunPower Maxion, uh, it looks like this. And these are the most efficient commercially available cells right now. And it's a 23 to 24% efficient. And in fact, the most efficient that a PV cell can be is 33.7%. Um, by And this is a cav there's a caveat on this. It is for a single layer solar cell. And most commercial are single layer solar cells. And this is because of something called the Shockley Caser limit. And what it means is at this, the way that um, PV cells work is there is a band gap and the photons that like you have to tune your PV cell to this band gap, to this energy level. And this energy level is the most that you can get out of any photon. So let's say that the photon has more energy than this. Then it will create this amount of energy and any excess energy will just be lost as heat. If the photon has less energy than this, it just won't be able to create any electricity. It just won't, it won't be able to bridge the band gap. So you pick your band gap. If you pick it here, it's less efficient. The most efficient is at 1.5 EV. And at that thing, you get 33% efficiency if you make the perfect, theoretically perfect solar cell. Now you're, you guys are saying, well, no, I've heard of um, solar cells that are more efficient than 33%. So as you can see here, there are solar cells that are 47% in the lab, you know, and several in the thir upper 30s. So you, these have gone past the uh, Shockley Caser limit. No, they haven't. It seems like they have, but they haven't. That's because all of these that are um, beyond that limit are not single junction cells. They're either using a concentrator, so they're using a magnifying glass to concentrate solar onto there, or they're using multiple junctions. So the way this works is this is like a multi-junction cell, and this is a theoretical paper that it could theoretically exceed 50% efficiency. And what they're doing is they're using something with multiple band gaps. They have This is a three-layer solar cell. And so this first layer has a band gap of almost two. So it'll capture all these. The, any, any photons with higher, uh, higher energy than this, it'll be just lost as heat. So that's their inefficiency. But it'll capture up to two. And then anything that doesn't reach two will, um, will go to the next layer and get captured by at 1.4 and then they'll go there's another layer that'll capture the one point so by getting different band gaps in different junctions you can extract as much energy out of the uh the the spectrum of photons that you're getting on there um, the reason that these are not commercially available or not readily available is these things are extremely expensive to make and so they're very cost prohibitive. So if you need something with maximum efficiency and cost doesn't matter, then you can get these multi-junction solar cells. But most commercial projects, you know, they're about getting the most efficiency for the money. And so they use single junction cells. All right. So which leads me uh, to uh, this paper. Solar energy harvesting by carbon nanotube optical rectenna. All right, so let's look at this. So they talk about here in this paper that conventional semiconductor solar cells are limited by the Shockley-Caser efficiency limit, which is about 
And then they go on to say, multi-junction solar cells provide a solution to overcome this efficiency limit, but they're expensive to produce because they use rare materials and require more manufacturing steps. So that's this, uh, this uh, multi-junction cell that we're talking about here. So you can't overcome it by just having multiple junctions and stacking them, but that's just really expensive. On the other hand, the record conversion efficiency for a rectenna is 90%. 90.6% for 2.5 gigahertz. In addition, they're costing me very less. Okay, so that's not great English, but uh, it can be much less compared to uh, silicon PV cells because they use thin layers of metals and insulators. Carbon nanotubes are considered as a perfect material for optical rectennas. Okay, so what is a rectenna? Rectenna basically is a shortened word for rectifying antenna. So rectifier is basically like a special kind of diode that converts AC to um, AC to uh, DC. So let's look at this. Uh, so this is what it looks like. This is a rectenna for a microwave. So you can see this is the antenna and then it's got a little diode in here and then it's uh, producing um, LED light to just to prove that it's working. So you can shoot um, radio waves at this thing, uh, microwave radio waves at this thing, and it'll turn it into electricity. Now, the problem here is that, um, that antennas to pick up uh, a, a radio wave are in the centimeter to meter size. So you can just create those fairly easily. If you want to get into visible light, the wavelength is really small. And to get an antenna that uh, makes this kind of, that can ob get obtain this kind of uh, wavelength EM radiation, the antenna has to be really tiny. And the other problem is, is that when the wavelength is this small, the frequency is really, really fast. See, the frequency of these uh, radio waves is not very fast. And so you don't need the rectifying diode to switch very quickly. But once you get into this range, the rectifying um, diode has to switch extremely quickly. I think in the terahertz range, uh, instead of like the gigahertz range, it has to be terahertz or even faster. And it's very hard to make um, a diode that switches that quickly. So that's the two biggest problems. Um, so what they figured out is there are these carbon nanotubes. You can make carbon nanotubes, and they are the right size to act as antennas for the optical range or the spectrum that the sun is in. So they they figured that part out, and then they need to figure out different kinds of uh, diodes. And I guess there's these like diodes that I I don't really I'm not an electrician, so I'm not really sure. But there's these like metal insulator metal diodes which are really fast, and there's like tunneling. Uh, MIM diodes, and they're they're very very fast, and so this is stuff that people are working on currently. And theoretically, you could have an optical rectenna um, that would be ninety percent efficient. Now, this is completely theoretical. No one's ever made this. Uh, there's this company called Nova Solix that is making carbon nanotube antennas, um, and they claim that they've made a uh, the world's fastest diode, as well as figuring out a way to make these carbon nanotubes. And they said when perfected, there'll be 90% efficiency. I looked for this and they claim they've made a prototype that is 40% efficient. Um, and my guess is that the reason it's 40% efficient is because they're, they have a half bridge um, rectifying diode, which only uh, collects the top half of the um let me see yeah here you go so i think they have my guess is they have a half bridge rectifier which only captures the top half of the ac and you lose the bottom half of the ac so the, you these are only 40 percent efficient if you get a full wave um then you can convert the the other side of the ac into dc and collect most almost all of it and that's i don't i think they haven't found a full wave rectifying diode yet that's my guess. I'm not sure. But in any case, they claim to have made a 40% efficient um, optical rectenna uh, collector. 
but I, I see no verification of it. So I'm, I don't know if it's true or not. Anyway, it is a company. They, they, you can invest in them and uh, they're in the very early stages. They supposedly, um, they've been talking, you can find information about this company back to 2017. So they, they've been going for five years and there is no commercial product um, at this point, but you can see these are the optical rectennas in here. But I did not realize that you could use an antenna to capture um, visible light. I mean, we all know that you use antennas to capture radio waves. So that much is true. But I had no idea that there was antennas for visible light. Um, but it makes sense because it's all the same electromagnetic spectrum. And um, what sh works here should theoretically work here. Now, it's easier to make, interestingly, it's easier to make a rectenna for infrared light. Um, so you could use uh, infrared rectenna to make energy from waste heat, which is another interesting proposition. Uh, so very, very interesting. I, I was like floored that this could happen and that this technology existed. I hope this company or some other company does make it happen because a 90% efficient um, solar cell would just basically change the world. And, you know, they claim that this is much cheaper to make and that it is 10 times cheaper on a per watt basis than PV. So if you could make it 10 times cheaper, if solar was 10 times cheaper, it'd be ridiculous. And since it's carbon nanotubes, those things are um, fairly inert and non-toxic and easy to get. And so that's, um, that'd be, you could roll out solar everywhere. And a 90% efficient solar cell on the Aptera would give it a range of almost four times what it is now, which would be like, 160 miles per day, which is insane. Um, theoretical uh, top range of 160 miles a day by solar charging alone, which would be completely bonkers. Um, but this is not happening anytime soon. This company evidently has been working on it for five years. They claimed they were very close five years ago and there's nothing so far. So I suspect this is much harder than we think, uh, but it is something that's theoretically possible using materials that are not really rare or expensive. So my suspicion, it is just a matter of time before this happens. Now it might be 10 years, might be 20 years before it happens, but this whole concept of using an antenna rather than um, the photovoltaic effect to make electricity from sunlight is, um, it was just mind blowing to me. So anyway, I thought I'd share it with you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this was somewhat interesting to you. It was really interesting to me. Um, I will link these, uh, papers in the description if you guys want to read them yourself and, um, yeah, thanks for watching and thanks as always to our supporting members and have a great day, everyone.